Hi, Michael Fox here. Today I am visiting the pollinator link garden of Greg Neal, an urban forest created in a house block. Greg's garden backs onto the Cooparoo Finger Gullies bush care site and consolidates that habitat by providing water, food and shelter for wildlife. My bird list is very disappointing considering what we've got. Um, so yeah, it's, it's rainbows, occasionally it'll be um, uh, scaly breasteds. Haven't seen any scaly breasteds in here this year. Mm -hmm. Noisy miners, of course. Um, Teresian crows, pied butcher birds, kookaburras, and uh, carawongs. Okay. Um, so it, it's all the typical birds um, that you would expect for this sort of environment. Um, for the honey eaters, the, the, yeah. the, the rain bays and the noisy miners, the, the aggressive noisy honey eaters, and then the large um, meat eaters. We, we had a, you can see the termite mound up here in, in that iron bar. Oh yes. The, the kookaburras came out of there a few weeks ago, um, a hatchling that is, and, okay. and just sitting here watching the amount of food going into that one chick is just amazing. Um, so, and there's been a currawong hatchling and, uh, and there's a crow in the nest up here at the moment. So we're, we're dominated by the very large carnivores. Mm. or omnivores, carnivores, and, uh, and these large aggressive honey. So we've got a common grow there having a drink? Um, yeah, yeah, there's always a few lemon bulbs that are always, yeah, they're regular business. Yeah, there's a few lemon So it's good for the butterflies? Yeah, yep. So they're the Brisbane Creek Lily. Mm. White flower? Yep, yep. And, uh, and they just flower spectacularly in spring. Lovely little head of white flower. Yeah. And then you, um, you can see the, the blackish fruit, brown fruit on it. Yeah. So that'll go brown. And then the uh, seed will drop off and they sell seed quite, quite easily. And you've got um, love flower in there? Love flower, yeah. I think every garden should have some love flower. Oh, absolutely. So Supports five butterfly species. Does it? Yeah. Oh. And it spreads like crazy. Yeah. And you've got some native geranium. Yep, yep. And that spreads like crazy too. Yeah, but easily controlled if you don't want it in one particular path. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Mulgafan? Or, um, I, I don't know what that is. Um, rough maiden hair. Yeah, well, certainly he's done it then, yeah. yeah. Rough maiden hair fern, mm -hmm. I think. Yep. Yep. So then you've got a grass tree? Love grass trees, yeah. So yeah. I've got half a dozen different Different types? Trees. Well, I've got three, four, di three different types of grass trees, I suppose, and half a dozen specimens. Mm. And you've got, um, this is North Queensland. Um, it flowers after rain, not that it's rain, so it shouldn't mm. be really flowering, but uh, yeah. yeah. Lovely, lovely flower, and then it gets this red fruit on it. Mm. Mm. But you can see how, when you're looking there, how dense a flower it is. It's a massive white flower. Yeah, so it's a rainforest tree. Mm. Yeah. So, doing very well here. Oh, mm. You probably know what that is. Orange thorn. Black thorn. Yeah. Hmm? Black thorn? No, no, orange thorn. Orange thorn. Mm. Yeah, from our local native rainforest. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I haven't come across an orange thorn. Or it may be the same mm. thing I'm thinking of. Mm, yeah. The, uh, and you've got a uh, native beehive up here? Yep, one native. And you got this from... Um, uh, the CSIRO fella? No, no, I didn't. Um, I got that from a bushwalking colleague. They were, uh, they got it 
two or three um, beehives and they were robbing bees. So, um, so I took my empty box down and they gave me one of their full boxes and I brought it home. The native citrus finger line. Oh, finger line. Yeah, now that, so, that is a good looking finger line. Yeah, and there's another one over there. So they, they'd flowered a couple of times and I, I'd had no fruit and I thought, oh, maybe it's, maybe it's lacking pollination. So I imported the um, um, native, native bees. bees. The stingless bees? Yeah. Um, but saying that, it, it, it actually fruited before they came here, so uh, it was about the same time, but you know, the bees wouldn't have pollinated the plants, the flowers. Well, they may now. Yeah, they may now, yeah. Mm. But since I've had the bees, I actually haven't had any fruit. <laughs> you got a finger lime here with finger limes on it. Oh, there is some. Look at that. Just one, isn't it? Just one. Yeah. Oh no, you got more here? One, two, three. Yeah, there's a bit more development to do there though, isn't there? A bit more growing. So, how do you handle the mosquitoes in the ponds? There's none. I've never seen any. I don't, hmm? I don't understand why. Um, and I've tried to keep, because we, we had a, a, a bath that our know, place at Yonder, and that had mozzie, so I put specific blue eyes in it, and they kept the, the um, the mozzie larvae at bay. Yeah. Because uh, Annette was, she's been, one of the many things was an environmental health officer, so you know, totally knowledgeable on the mozzies and the larvae and everything. And so, but fish just will not survive in those things. They, they always seem to disappear. I put them in, but no mozzie larvae is. I can't understand it. Frogs? Yep. Yeah, striped marsh frogs only. Okay. We we had when we first got here, um, we also had some um, graceful tree frogs. Okay. That, that was just one of the starts of one of the droughts, and after two years of that drought, those graceful ones disappeared and never come back. So you've got your reeds here, your reed bed. Yeah. That's got a bit out of control. Yes, it, it, as I said, I, I actually planned it so. You know, it's a frog. Yep. But um, I actually found out that when it gets too thick like this, the frogs don't actually... They don't like it. No. Um, so they obviously need some open water somewhere. So I... Because I, I... Once I started trying to clean it out and I got some open water, the, 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 the um, striped marsh frogs came back and started doing their thing in here again. Yep. Good. So is it flowered here? No, uh, not yet. Hasn't been in long enough. Okay. Hmm. Another couple of years it might. Yeah. A spear lily. Hmm. And you've got another one of your grass trees. Yep. Multi trunk one now. It's oh, like, yes. I, I brought it in as a single trunk. But yeah. It's, yeah. But it's become multi trunk. And this one here? It's, um, well, it's a brachychitin. Um, you know, like a flame tree. Oh, yes, yes. It, except it's, uh, it's, um, Again, I've forgotten his proper name, um, but it only be, only gets that uh, quite small and gets uh, red. It becomes deciduous like the flame tree, yep. and then gets little red flowers on it. Okay, yeah. yeah, but it doesn't get a huge tree. So you've got the seed trees. You've got the acacias. Yep. You've got the um, um, centers. Yep. And the uh, Dianellas, they're all seed producing. Yep. So they're feeding the seed eating birds if they turn up. I, I have seen uh, pale headed rosellas down here on the ground eating the, uh, the fruit of, okay. of the, of the uh, not I was going to say the lily pilly, of the dianellas. Yep. yep. Out of your backyard, you've got your bush care site. That's it. Yes, so this is the area that we planted in May 2016. Thank you, Greg, for sharing your amazing garden and its wildlife. If you have been inspired by Greg's garden, please visit www.pollinatorlink.org to register your garden and help us reach our 2018 target of 1,000 
registered pollinator link gardens. The Pollinator Link Project is a non-profit social enterprise sponsored by B the B4C Environment Fund and supported by the Brisbane City Council. The objective is to create a city-wide mosaic habitat for birds, butterflies and bees by providing water, food and shelter in backyards, balcony gardens, schoolyards and parks. Please register today and join the Pollinator Link community bringing wildlife back to city gardens.